Hi and welcome to Super Top Gaming. My name is Charlie and today I am super excited because we are taking a look at Agamonia. Now this is not the first foray into Agamonia that we've made as Tabletop Gaming. We did have it as a cover on the magazine. Ah, you can pick that up in the link in the description. Of course, where we've got a five page discussion with the designer. It's all very exciting to read. However, that aside, ah, literally aside, um, we have got a tutorial box for Agamonia. So if you are new, if you haven't heard of this before, if you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, Agamonia is a cooperative story driven game um, that is set in a whole new world in a sort of GM-less RPG style game. And here it is, this is Agamonia. We have a tutorial set, which is incredibly exciting because it's gonna give us sort of a sense of what it is that this does. So today we're gonna have a first look, we're gonna have a look at what's inside here, we're gonna try and make sense of what those components do in terms of story, in terms of how you're gonna play, so that you can work out if this is something that you might be interested in. Now, I put a disclaimer in these sorts of things straight away. So firstly, of course it's a tutorial set. It's not gonna be the same as what it is that you receive at retail. In addition, to that this is essentially because it's not your retail version some things may change you may see some differences from this and um, I don't know of any that are intended as yet but keep in mind that these things can change plus there are some things different in terms of I always mention this one like the box itself it comes at the moment for us it comes with no box inserts obviously by the time it comes to you it will be a beautiful masterpiece um, of which you can be super excited about but just be aware um, sort of my my messy unboxing of this that I'm going to end up doing um, is not reflective of what you will get in the final game but there is more than enough in here for us to sink our teeth into and work out if this game is for you. So without further ado let's do that. Alrighty we've got the box opened we are almost ready to go but where do we start? Well of course we start with the rule book. So this gives us our tutorials. Now, we have three different tutorials that we can run through here. Um, in the main game itself, you're going to have 31 scenarios that you can play through. So you're not talking about this being a very, very short game. However, as you play through, you can almost sort of like pause and come back to if you need to, because that in one day would be epic, but also a full day, so a bit tricky. So we start with the rules. Separately to those, we have things like your combat reference at the moment, a full page. This is the bit that I am very, very excited about. This is your tutorial book. What I like about it, first of all, let's talk about the fact that it's ring bound. Second of all, we'll talk about the fact that it contains all of the maps that you need. That's so exciting. So our first scenario, for example, is a flooding or flooded in, depending on where in the story you are. Um, and this, with that ring bound, will lay flat on your table. But it doesn't just stop there, because in addition, we then get more maps. We get more scenarios. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a little bit more detail in a moment when I give you an idea of how the sort of play roughly works. Um, but for starters, I'm incredibly excited about that. I like this, I like that it's not just like a fold out board, it's something that's interactive um, and it takes us through. Now, of course, with the my immediate panic when I first unboxed this was, oh my goodness, if I have to lay the map flat, how on earth am I gonna see the rules? That is why we have the separate rule book. So if you had the same panic I did, crisis averted. They thought of these things. And then we have a huge box of components. Now that was the reason I did the disclaimer earlier about the box in terms of you will get inserts and such, there will be changes in terms of a retail release, but I'm more than happy with this. This gives me everything that I need. So let's have a quick go through of what things are. Starting out with player boards. So you have multiple of these and on them, you will have a description on the back as to their sort of history, who they are, what they're doing, why they care, what style you are going to be playing. For example, this one is a, a sort of paladin style. So you can play that. Um, or the one next on my list is, ooh, a hydromancer telepath. Nice. And we've got sort of plenty to choose from. I will pop um, a quick sort of overview of those so you can see what they look like. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are no humans and that's an intentional decision to try and absorb you into the fantasy because it's very easy to sort of just go for what you know. You have no choice in Agamonia. You're going to be playing as a new creature and you're going to be absorbing their culture and being part of their story, which is super exciting. One thing to note as well is as you play, you're going to almost level up. You're gonna gain things, you're gonna gain stuff, you're gonna be able to do different things you're gonna be able to pick what that is from those and add them to your character board so you can get very attached to your character um, and you can bring them a long way from where they start what that means is your decisions that you're making are really impactful on what you're playing which is very exciting um, and lets you feel like this is your character this is your person you be the same vibe that you get from an RPG um, but nicely 
in a box. So to fit into those, you have these. These will slide in based on the decision that you make and what you choose to do and when they unlock. And they're gonna give you extra options for what you can do on your turn. So you will select, perhaps I wanna take that action as opposed to the ones that were offered at the base. Now, not all actions are free. Again, I'll talk more in detail about it, but it's worth noting at this point that we have a VTI system. So these little tokens, are sort of, I think the description would maybe be like your energy levels. Um, so you can choose to expend those to do another action or a different style of action. So it might be that you can re-roll a dice if you spend them. It might be that you run so you can move further by spending them. And then you'll have to spend a turn to recover them if you want more back, more to be available to you. It's a nice system that lets you feel like you're pushing and you're getting closer and closer and you're making these momentful decisions without overexerting what you're doing. So you don't become too powerful almost. Now we have some of those for each, so I want to move on to the bit that I find exciting, which is the dice. Yes, Dice Goblin activates because these are what you're rolling for your action. So do you manage to lift the gondola? Do you manage to do something else? Do you manage to win your fight? All determined by these. And again, you can potentially use that veto to change those results if you need to, if you fail that or you want to do something different. The option is there. And the dice doesn't stop there because there are more. Then we get into some of the nitty gritty. There are a lot of cards in this game because that's how you're going to be telling your story. So these, for example, are for our first tutorial scenario. Um, and in those, we are going to be selecting things based on where we move on the board and what we're able to interact with. But I can show you how amazing the artwork is on this. You can see that there is a priest clutching a chest and it's up to you to convince him. If you manage to convince him, if you complete the test below, you have a reward of some description. For example, scenario two is the road for Woundale and we have some extra options in there too. We also have enemy boards. Now these are of course keeping track of your enemies because you are not you are not here just to have a wander around you're here to fight and battle and tell a story and become what bards sing about speaking of which we also have injury and condition cards that might for example this one gives you a little bit more this one shows that you are weakened then we also have fate cards which will turn over each round and also our item cards that give you something a little bit extra. Those item cards are numbered so it might be that you pick them up on your journey as you go through you may resolve an issue and it says ah go and pick up xyz and you'll be able to take that with you. One of them I will mention specifically is a later one it is a Nalum. Nalum? Nalum? But the reason I mentioned that one is because we seem to have a Nalum miniature as well. So cute! Seeing as you've had a glimpse of a miniature, there are more. I will pop them around. These are your heroes. So these are who you're obviously playing as um, and the nicest way to denote where you're going through. But they are not all. The evil though doesn't reach miniature stage. It does, however, reach standee phase. So you've got these creepy winged monsters with names like Skitterer and Lumin Demon and Hive Mother. And then finally, yes, finally, we have assorted tokens to marker our board so that we know where we're going. Before we go any further, however, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the character sheet itself so you can have an idea, or character board, I should say. So I've picked uh, Venia of Heartwood, of which I have a miniature that matches, fabulous. Um, and of that, I have a certain amount of stamina points, um, so I have chips that match that. Now, I also have certain abilities automatically, so that basically falls into movement. So I can move two spaces on my movement turn, um, or I can use one of those tokens to move three spaces, that's walking and running. I can just use a turn to recover, that's up to me, um, but those are our movement to begin with. At the bottom here, we have our might, our agility and our will, um, which we'll use in tests as we go through. Um, and then of course we have sort of our options for what we're gonna do each round. Now, these you'll see have extra bits and bobs in. So they've given us different tokens to put in. So if I were to chuck that one in, for example, I get some extra abilities. Look, really fun. But it's up to me to unlock those based on what I do as we go through. Now you'll see this little token here. This is sort of our decision maker. What is it that we're gonna do this round? Are we going to take an extra maneuver that we're able to use or are we going to focus? Now that focus means we get a plus one to any of these stats. So if we're looking to complete a certain action based on a card that's been there, um, it makes it a little bit easier for us to see what that might be. Okay, let's get started with actually setting up this 
is our tutorial book. I mentioned it earlier with the beautiful spiral bound that means it will lay flat. Now, if I just open that up, you will see immediately it gives us our first scenario, which is the flooded inn. Now there is some text that we're gonna read through that's gonna set the scene for where we are. Um, and I'll give you sort of a brief overview of that. Um, so the city of Ambergate stands on dozens of small islands connected by canals and bridges. One such island holds the shimmering squid inn where you are staying. One evening you are standing in the balcony overlooking a magnificent gate from which the city gets its name and a doorway into nowhere. A few weeks ago, the runes decorating the gate lit up with an eerie blue radiance. People have come far and wide to witness this phenomenon, just as you admire it from your balcony. Just then, the gate starts to crackle with azure energy and water starts to pour through it. The canals overflow and the islands closest to the gate are completely submerged. Cries of panic and the ringing of bells fill the air. You'll rush downstairs into the common room where the water is already knee deep. The innkeeper, the barmaid and the customers all look desperately in need of help as the water pours through the door and windows. To help them, you will need to act quickly. Now, we overturn and we have, as before, our map. Quite nicely, that gives us a start here option. I am very happy with this. Make it as simple as possible. Make it as idiot proof as possible. I'm in. And we've also got different spaces available for things like initiative and our salvage pile. Now, the interesting thing about Agamemnia is that you don't necessarily have to be in the space you are to interact with it. That's something that means you're making more decisions. Let me explain. So, for example, if we look at H, it has a zero beneath it, and that means that you must be in that space, zero spaces away, in order to interact with the card that's there. However, if we move down slightly to L, you can be two spaces away. So you can be slightly further away to overturn the card to see what's happening there. Now, the actions on that card may require you to be closer, and it will tell you if so, um, but you can then make the decision as to whether you're going to spend your time completing the action for them or whether you're going to be a little bit more choosy and do something else. Maybe you've already got a mission, maybe there's already something you need to do. You can then have a quick look at what that is and then carry on unburdened should you wish. This means all you're doing is making important decisions. Do you take that challenge? Do you abandon? Because you only have so many turns in which to deal with things. Now I've set this up for a two player game, but obviously it is me on my own and I'm just showing you what we're doing. So we will just pop Venia into our start here. And then I'm going to choose my extra maneuver action um, first off so that we can go through. So let's have a quick look. If I move to here, I will see uh, that I am on H. I can check out that card because it has a zero and I am in that space. So we refer to our deck of cards. So on the Shimmering Squid card, we have in the common room, the innkeeper is directing customers upstairs. The stout Carillion heartily welcomed you yesterday eve, but is now clearly fighting off panic. And you have the option here. Do you want to offer help? If so, you flip the card. And that has a little zero beside it. So you must be on that space with no distance in order to flip the card. Let's flip the card. In this case, there's no conditions for us to do so. There's no requirement to do any strength checks or might checks or anything like that. It is simply, if you want to flip the card, do. So, he then tells us, are you certain you can face the current? As Bakora is my witness, I want no harm to come to you. He looks you up and down, appraising you from head to toe. In fact, perhaps you could help with the bridge. I fear it will collapse and then the escape route will be cut off for many townsfolk. Work hard and may the creator's success flow down on us all. There are others in need of your help, such as the silk merchant and the barmaid, and who knows who else is inside the rooms. Just then, a gush of waves sends more water and debris into the open door. You must hurry. So hopefully you see that you're building a story. So now you need to make the decision. Are you going to head towards where the bridge is in order to try and restore that? Are you going to keep trying to explore the inns themselves, see if there's anyone left in the rooms, if there's anything that you need to do there? How you're going to help is your decision and your outcome as well. So in that case, there was no outcome in terms of you didn't receive anything, you didn't have to necessarily do anything, it's just your intro. Now, as you have all taken your turn and completed it, you will overturn one from the Fate deck. Um, there are a different amount of Fate cards depending on how many players you have. So in the two player game that I've set up, we have seven of those and that sort of gives you an idea there are seven turns, you need to complete your actions before you hit the end phase. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because there's just one that I want to show you. Um, so we'll say that we've moved, we've Done, we run, we are heading all the way down to our gondola at the very bottom. Now from that we need only be two spaces away in order to see what's there, but we're close enough now that I can have a look because I am one space away. So let's find L and see what they have to say for themselves. L is a blocked street. The street outside the inn has been blocked by a broken gondola carried by the flood. An escaping Patangan family with many four-armed children is stuck on the other side. The strong current keeps the gondola in place. The Patangan mother looks at you with desperation in her reptilian eyes. 
So we must be zero spaces away in order to flip the contour. That's the first thing we need to do. So we need to make sure that what we're doing offers us movement. Secondly, you'll see in order to flip the card, we now have a condition. We must score four might in order to be able to move it. First of all, I'm going to look at my character sheet and I'm going to see that I have two might, which isn't a lot, let's be honest. So we can take a risk. We're gonna roll some dice. That two might represents that I'm going to have two dice in order to roll. So let's see we're doing this our left is our standard hit you may have one you may have two in this case we've got two um, and that will count as one of your successes then we move on the next one is one success and one extra roll so we can re-roll that dice and hope that it gives us a better result in addition to the one that it gives us then finally the last one allows you to use your stamina so you have no successes innately, but you can spend one or two stamina to get an equal number of successes. So say for example, I rolled two, but I know that I need four to win. So I'm gonna use this one here and two of my stamina points in, a, in order to gain two more, which gives me the amount that I need in order to succeed. Having then succeeded, I can lift the gondola, I can flip this over and I can see what it has to say. Whilst I won't ruin the outcome for you if you do want to play through, what I will say is as you then collect different things, you do different actions, you unveil different cards across your turns, you don't really know if you're going to get any bonus from them, you're just doing so to explore. That's nice in itself. However, what we then do is we flip the page from the storybook um, and we see if you had this card, you might get this one. So for example, I'm going to get a reward because I saved those families and they're going to offer me some gratitude and provide me with something. That's something I then get to keep and I then get to take through future rounds. So it's worth having done, but I don't know which one's gonna be more beneficial out of the choices that I make until the end. So that is Agamonia. Now it is coming to Kickstarter very, very shortly, if not already. So I will put any link that you need in order to go check it out in the description below. If you are interested in the magazine which I showed you at the beginning which has that full feature and plus tons of other tabletop goodness you can head to tabletopgaming.co.uk um, to check that out and all of our extra information, features, reviews, everything is on there. Take a look at See. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe, although no my luck, they are the other way around. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Are you excited about it? Did you play through? How did you do? What character is your favourite? What would you like to see in this? Pop it all in the comment, basically, because it gives me this, uh, an opportunity to talk about games for a little bit longer. So I would absolutely love to hear from you. With that, of course, I have been Charlie. I hope you have a great day and thanks so much for watching.